Hi, welcome back. So today we're gonna to do a pressure test on the Bentley Brooklands. This is the same car that we did the brake test on using the lights, the low pressure warning lights in the cabin. And today we're gonna to see how the pressure builds up in the system using a gauge. So it's a much more accurate test. This is a very good way of diagnosing any faults in the hydraulic system. So what I've done is I've removed the brake pressure switch from down here. So you can see the two bleed screws there. There was a pressure switch in this port here, which I've removed and fitted the gauge. The second pressure switch is still in place. You have to depressurize the system before you remove the switch, otherwise you'll get a lot of fluid everywhere and it will come out at high pressure. So now we'll move into the cabin and we'll run the engine We'll see how that affects the gauge and what happens to the system pressure. Uh, you'll expect to see a flick up, which is whatever pressure is in the accumulators. And then it will build up to the max pressure and then it will hold. Okay, so now we're in the car, we're gonna start the engine and you're gonna see on the gauge how the pressure flicks up. So I'm about to start the engine, here we go. So the pressure's gone straight up to just under 1,000 PSI. That's what we want. That shows that we've got good pressure in our brake accumulators. And now we're gonna watch that pressure build up as the engine runs and the brake pump's pumping fluid in. It's just um, building up and that's being regulated by the valve body where the sphere is connected to. And what we expect to see is that go up to 2,500 PSI and then it should stop building and then it should slowly drop off a little bit and then it should hold. So if we pick the engine revs up slightly, it should increase the speed at which it builds pressure. So it's just about to make the 2,500 PSI and there you go, it stopped building and now it's just dropped back and it should sit and hold pressure there. So if we turn the engine off, it should maintain that pressure. So as you can see, it's holding pressure there. Over time, overnight, over a few days, the pressure will slowly leak back. And that's why when you get into the car, sometimes ignition on straight away, you'll get the um, low pressure warning lights. Okay, so I'm gonna run the engine again. We've reached full pressure and it's not building anymore. It's just, uh, it's holding pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the brakes, I'm gonna pump the pedal and show you what happens to the gauge and the pressure in the system when you use the brakes and how it recovers once you get to a certain point. So I'm gonna start using the brakes. As you can see, it's not building, it's just dropping down. And then when it gets to about 1800, it should kick in again and start building back up. Right, so there you go, it stopped dropping and it started to climb again. So we'll build the revs back up and show you what happens when it just starts pumping back up. I can't exactly see what numbers it got to on the gauge, but we can look at that after. So there it's, it's reached back to the full pressure and it's leaking back just to hold pressure now. So that's what happens as you use the brakes in the car when you're driving. It will constantly do that. It will allow it to build up. And then as you use the brakes, it will reduce the pressure until it hits a certain point and then it starts building up again. So now what I'm going to show is what happens when you use the brakes without the engine running. And what I expect to see is every time I pump the pedal, a little bit of the pressure to be eaten away and it will just drop down slightly. And then when it gets to the point where it reaches the sphere pressure, it will, so the last, around about the last thousand PSI, it will just drop straight off. So the engine's not running, we're at full pressure at the moment, and I'm just going to start pumping the pedal. I'm going to do it quickly because it should take because it's so much pressure in the spheres. It should take quite a lot of pumps. Uh, 
and there it's gone down. So that's gone to zero pressure now. So obviously, when you're driving along, if your engine cuts out, that's how much braking you get before you have zero brakes. So we've got zero pressure now. So I'm gonna remove the gauge. I've already undone it. I'm just gonna wind it out. I'm gonna reinstall the brake pressure switch. So here's the brake pressure switch. What you've got is you've got a contact in there with a spring and a diaphragm. And once the pressure pushes the diaphragm, it lifts the contact off and that's when you get the light. What you have to be a bit careful of with these pressure switches is they've got a large um, body. So you have a big spanner to do them up, but the thread on them is actually only a three eighths thread. So if you do them up too tight with the big spanner, they will break. So we're just gonna tighten up the brake pressure switch being careful because it's a large spanner and we're going to reconnect the wires these are the wires for system one and system two so you've got to make sure they go the right way around just monitor that that before you take them off check what colors are on which one you've got a red and orange so we tested number one system if i wanted to check the other system then obviously fit the switch back to the system number one and remove system number two switch and fit the gauge in number two and then you're going to be checking because each system is completely independent of each other. So whatever's happening in one system might or might not be happening in the other. The only thing is if you run out of fluid completely and your brake pumps have no supply, then you're gonna get no fluid at all. But even the reservoir is split into two systems. So yeah, that's how you would check the other system. So the gauge I've got here, this is just something, um, it's an off the shelf gauge, um, readily available. You can choose what kind of output comes from the gauge here, the thread type and you can choose the size of the dial. And we've just used one of the flexible braided hoses that comes from the valve body to the system. So this is actually the same hose that's fitted to the car. And we've just made an adapter to fit those to the gauge. So it's a very handy tool to have to help diagnose any faults with your hydraulic system. Obviously you have to be careful if you're doing an earlier car that runs on RR363, um, not to contaminate with one that's been used for mineral oil, because obviously that's you don't want to contaminate those fluids and cause damage to the hydraulic system. Diagnosing faults on the hydraulic system is much easier if you do have a gauge like this. You'll know whether the sphere pressure is low and you'll know whether the valve body isn't holding pressure properly or it's not allowing it to build. You can check whether the pump's uh, you know, pumping anything at all. So it's a very uh, handy tool to have on these cars. Thanks for watching.